Uh, yeah, thank you. Yes, yes. Good evening, everyone. Um, can you all hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. All right, cool. Um, yeah, I'm just going to pick up from where I can left off, you know, um, where he said he, I think he appreciates the work that y'all are putting in. And I mean, I do too. I think you guys have improved a lot you know, from stage one. Uh, so that's good to see. I like the efforts. I think people are even learning faster you know, than the program. And it's obvious if you're going online to, if you're going on YouTube, if you're Googling stuff, it's obvious in your designs, you know, because we know how much we teach you and we know how much effort you're putting back into your task or assignment. So um, this is just me saying well done, you know, to those of you that are really putting in hard work. Okay, um, so this is not a class per se, okay, we, we just want to, it's kind of like a journey so far, right? We just want to review previous tasks, for example, and, you know, hear your challenges, especially with the previous task, and then just point out one or two things. Um, so I'm just preparing your mind, okay, it's not a class, we're just reviewing um, the tasks that we did last week. So I think what I want to ask is, one or two persons should tell me um, the challenges you faced from the last task. I think your task was, um, I think you were asked to, from your iBook um, research that you did, you were asked to create personas and then create user stories, right? And um, user flow, wireframe, and high fidelity designs. Okay, so I need you guys to tell me the areas where you thought you know, or you felt it was a bit difficult for you. I'm waiting now. You know, if you want to raise your hand, please do that. But I really need to hear from you guys because we've seen your work, right? So we know that certain people have certain challenges. Um, it's not cool if you come to a class and you're not expressing your challenge when there are people you know, ready to help you. So you, if you can't speak, you can type it. So I really need to know where you have challenges. So you know, can help. Even if you're in stage five, it doesn't mean that, you know, because I know some of you had to go online. So if you're not clear about anything, even if you're in stage five, um, you can ask. Okay, we have raised hands. Um, I'm sorry if I'm going to butcher your name, um, Takuro. Okay, good evening. Good evening. Hi. Okay, so I just wanted to make a clarification concerning the lo-fi. So take, for yeah. instance, there is a sign-up page, and then we have mm. part of name, a text box, and email address. For the lo-fi, is it allowed to write, the, to use the word name for it, or we're supposed to replace it with something else? Right, so um, when this lo-fi hi-fi thingy was discussed in one of our classes, someone asked a question and, or he said he saw different types of wireframes and he was a bit confused. So I'm going to say, and this is an answer you're going to get a lot in design. It depends. If you ask a senior or a pro designer certain question, they will tell you it depends. I've always tried to, um, make it clear that there is no, um, there's no one size fits all, right? And nothing is set in stone, it's bound to change. So it really depends on you. There's like, okay, there's low-fi, there's mid-fi, and there's high-fi, okay? If you want your wireframe to have, um, you know, name, a little bit of color, or all the, all the text as it should be, name, email address, if you, if you even want to write um, forgot password, you can do all that, it is fine. If you want to represent those um, texts as just lines, as in just line, just rectangle, 
that would be like the most basic form of, um, you know, a wireframe. You can do that. So it really depends. I think the thing here is when you, when you um, start working with product team, right, and you need to brainstorm, you need to ideate. Nobody has time to go and start picking color. You know how finicky um, Figma can be going here and there, trying to pick one color or that until you get good. So the easiest thing, if you're coming up with the solution there and then, and you don't have paper and pen, right? You just have your Figma or whatever um, software frame that you have. The easiest thing is to use circles, rectangles, and lines, as basic as that. That is how, so you can quickly move things around. You can just duplicate the frame, remove one circle, add another thing, like those circles and frames. It's not much that you know you have, um, you know, name, email address. You start filling all those information that you can think about later. No, but in a situation where you've talked about, um, let's say you've already talked about this thing with your stakeholders or your fellow designers, and you know exactly what you're doing. Like you guys have dis um, discussed the concept, right? When you want to design, you cannot take your time to start um, making these things very clear. Like, um, you know, the name, the email, even when you get into the app screen itself, categories, recommended, how do you know all those things from the beginning? So for me, I mean, that's why I say it depends. It's, it's really up to you, it's really up to you. But for me, if I wanted to just quickly come up with solutions, I'll use circles, I'll use rectangles, and I'll just use lines, okay? So I can quickly move things around. And I know that I'm not invested. I'm not, I'm not wasting time. If I have to come up, okay, for example, you, you attend workshops, you know, for sessions where they will tell you in five minutes, okay, create, redesign Instagram in five minutes. You cannot, and, and okay, and they are, they're asking for like maybe five different designs, right? In five minutes, it gets crazy like that. Nobody has time at that point to start looking for color. The main thing you want to do is lay out. How will this design be? And if you're doing five um, designs in five minutes, so that's one minute per design. Okay, so you see how circles, rectangles, and lines will just surface. Um, I, I think I'll even show that in a bit. Um, well, I hope that's clear. Yes, it is. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, I saw something in the chat. Okay, okay. Um, Victoria, please go first, then I'll take the chat. Hi, Victoria. Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, I was using my earpiece initially. That means it's bad. Good evening. Okay, Good you've evening. answered some of the question I wanted to ask earlier from the first person's mm -hmm. question. So the other question I want to ask now is, though a little realized that probably is because I created the component and the variance inside my work. When you will give us the tax that we should do, I actually create, I did not do a, a style guide. I did not do it outside before using it on my work. I actually created it on my work and pick the style guide and pick the variance and use it as well. So I realized that it's giving me a dotted line round the components is a dotted line around it. So I try removing it, it's not, I'm unable to remove it. It's just there. Another question that I want to ask is, is as regard this tax that we've done, I've not gotten comments, so I actually know if I'm on track. Okay, I prepared a, I did um user story and I did user flow. I did use that flow, but it was not saying it was not saying that we should ensure that we have a personnel to that should be there. So the way I actually answer the question, I want to know if I have called the personnel inside or not. So I just want I just want to because I read about these things most time in the actual class. I went back to listen to to watch it, and when I watched it, I was unable to ask the questions that came to my mind as I think. So please, I just want you to 
to say some things about combining three together. You see that it's going to be like separate, separate, separate. The user person having a picture and brief history about the person or what um, are we asked to do again there? Okay. Um, I hope it's okay to ask you what stage you're in because I'm taking down your name. So I have to go and look back at your work. Stage five or four? Stage five, that's the user personnel and all that. But the components, the um, component and variance, the assignment on component and variance was the one I'm referring to that I have them dotted like around, around my component that I created. Okay, so I think that uh, I'm not even exactly clear um, in what you're saying, but you have three pages, right, on Figma. And the advice um, I remember Tolu gave, I think, was that on one page, create your component, the variant and your style guide, uh, even your text guide, I think. So everything should be in one page. And then on the other pages, you can then go ahead um, with your designs. I even saw some people that did um, wireframes on one page and high fidelity on the other page, um, you know, or their persona and all those other things on another page. So that's one way. So you don't get um, confused. The dotted lines, uh, the thing is when, when you've created components, and you created variants, it's very, very easy to start mixing them together. And like you said, when you try to move them, they will not, they will not even move because they are frames. At this point, they're not even ad boards, right? So they likely will not move. What you have to do is go back to that page where you created the component, where you created the variants. It's also possible there's, so there's something you're not changing. There's something you're not um, changing from the component itself. I don't have this, um, I think it's just better to show you. Let me just quickly see if I can share my screen. Okay. Can you see my screen? No. 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 Wow, okay. Um, okay, so while, while she's trying to set that up, um, you need to just ask a question. Let's see if we can address that. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Yeah, good evening. Okay, I don't think mine is really a problem, uh, but before the task, I really did not have an idea of book donation. I've never experienced it. I've never been part of it. So, you know, like my first time doing something like that. And it was difficult for me. So I just found my, found my way around it and did something and submitted, but I didn't get a comment. Though I've been promoted, but I really want to know like how I did, if it was good or something. That's just what I have to say. Okay, um, well, well, I don't think I don't think anybody has actually done the book stuff before. So it's, I think it's new to most persons. Um, you have been promoted. So that means you um, kind of did good. So the thing is this, you, we are taught users um, how to do a user story. You are taught, um, you know, user flow and the rest, right? Yes. Good. You applied it to yes. the task. Good. You read, uh, You guys were taught Figma, how to do some certain things in Figma, right? Yes. 
and then you applied, you now designed everything that you just talk as in you, everything you had actually put up into, you applied it into your design, right? Yes, I did. So I want to understand, what is it, what, what, apart from, apart from the feedback now, what, what do you think you don't really get? Because when you say you have not done it before, I want to understand what's, what do you not really understand? Okay. Well, my problem is, I know definitely there should be like something to say about the design. Like I just want to hear something about the design, like a problem or, okay, you need to work on this. You need to work on this. You need to do this. Oh. Something. I just want to hear something. <laughs> you just want to hear something. Yes. Okay, something. I... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, well, since you're eager to hear, you're eager to hear something. Um, well, let's see. Probably you you get that something on your on your design. I'm actually looking at it right now. So um, I'll give you 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 get that feedback on your Figma as a comment. Okay. All right, no problem. Yeah, but you actually did good. You really, you did good. You did good. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, who else? David. David, Luke, go ahead. Okay. Good evening, all everyone. Oh. Yes. Good evening, David. Okay. Please, uh, I just want to ask on my 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 board like my previous um, uh, um assignments i want to ask like i got a comment on the i he said where is okay first he said i should work on my alignment and then um, he asked where is my style guide i'm sort of confused i thought style guide is like the the um, um fonts i used the type of font, like maybe if it's regular board or thereabouts, I shall listed those stuffs there. I don't really know. I don't because when you said where is my, I'm now confused. If really I know what style guide is, and then secondly, I don't really know what to do about my my alignment. I use grids. All my design is in fact all the time I've designed. Everybody seems complaints about my alignment. I don't just know what else to do because I know I use grids, so I don't. I'm, I don't, I'm confused. I, what's okay, the best down, way to calm, use? Calm down. <laughs> you say everybody complains about your alignment. Yes. <laughs> calm down. <laughs> okay. Um, maybe there's something you're not doing well. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay. So I'm actually looking at your your work now. Okay. So you, let me, um, were you in the last class where Tolu actually did a style guide? Yes, I was. Good. Now, what she did and what she did, I did the same thing. Yeah, like she. No, 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 yeah. Yes. It's a yes or no? It's a yes or no? Oh yes, yes. Are you sure? Maybe I might not. I might, maybe I might not be actually correct, but I know that's what she did. That's what I actually tried to replicate. Uh, no, you you didn't. I'm actually looking at your work right now. Okay, I get. Okay. Um, I I see what you you did. Okay. Oh, yeah. but, uh when I when I ask when I ask you where is your style guide, it means that there's something more that you should do. Okay, I don't know what that's that. Why, is. That's why I asked if you saw when to look, actually, you know, when she uh, needed to uh, work on, she took someone's design from one of the tasks and then uh, worked on it, you know, to actually explain a lot of things. So she took time to really work out a style guide. Oh. Okay. Yes. So maybe you should actually just go through that. Are you have you been promoted? Yes, yes. Good. So that's not it. So that's why I said I see what you did. Okay. But me asking you that question is because look, there's something more that I'm expecting from you. Okay. That means you okay. can actually do better than what that. So you need to go back to that and then um learn how to actually do a comprehensive, a very good style guide. Why I'm it's the reason is because you will need it for later on. Oh, okay. And this goes this goes to everybody. I'm going to be exp I want to see a proper style guide. And of course, well, you're going to have the opportunity to really put that. But like I said, there's something I wanted to say, but that would be for the end of oh. towards, towards the end of the class. Okay, then what about my, what's the best grid I can use? I find myself, even when I still use the grid, I still although I don't see the I see things aligned, but yes, I still get. <laughs> work on your alignment i'm confused 
Are you sure you're not seeing men as trees? Okay, um, Boma, can you please uh, attend to this young man for signing breed and everything? So, hello, Boma, are you there? Hello, Boma, can you hear me? Uh, okay, so I think I'll... yes, I can hear you. Okay, so uh, please attend to this young man. He's really worried about his alignment and greed and stuff like that. So. His alignment. Okay, so David, ask your question again so Buma can hear you. Okay, okay. Sorry, Buma, welcome. I asked, uh, what is the best way to use grid? Like, I know all my designs, anybody that sees it, they will say, be like, oh, it's nice, but still work on your alignment. So I've actually done everything I know. I use grid. So I don't know the best this thing to use again so that I'll get properly, get my work properly aligned. Even though I don't see the misalignment though but i don't know i just wish <laughs> i don't know if you get see when working with when when you want to align your work very well eh, what i suggest mm. is you should make use of those um red line you see on figma that particular those lines will help you align your work very well after you've used your grid now so most times we can use grid after using grid and you want to post let's say your heading and you, you shift your heading away from the grid. Okay, you post your heading on the grid. Then when you want to now post your body text, you now move your body text somehow. So what I advise most times is use that um red, how will I put it? That red line you, you see on Figma. Whenever when you're, you're dragging an icon or something. Yes, anything you're dra dragging. Just use it. Yes. You see that it's properly, it will align your work well for you. Then aside the grid, what I use again is, on your left, on the left part of your Figma, there is that, um, and those places you can see your text and the rest of them. There are some tools, mm. transformation tools, where you can see align to top, align to bottom. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. So most times, if you want to align your text very well at the center of your work or anything, I just hold down my shift and I hold down the art board and I hold down that particular thing I want to align and I use any of those functions there to align it. Okay, then another yeah. thing still in, in, in the alignment, uh, maybe when I have two icons or something, an element, one up, one that like I'm uh, arranging them horizontally, you get. Yes, you get. I get. Uh -huh. Yes, I get. So the distance, I'm usually always, the vertical, the straight line from up to down is always right, but trying to align the one up and down, maybe I have to list maybe six things on the same line. Trying to get maybe the first one and the second one and the top, as in the different the alignment between yeah, each I get. of them being the same. I don't even the red line does I don't really get to do, do that you, one. You need to work, you need to use that tool on the right part. I'm not I'm not with my okay. You need to use that work, that tool very well. Um it's okay. on this part of your Figma. There okay. you can align your work very well using it that's what i use most time so what you do is you hold down the three or the four icons you want to work with you hold down shift and copy all at the same time then you use um the button this way if you want to align all of them horizontally you click align horizontally if you go down you see where you see um align align vertically align horizontally put spaces give equal spaces between. So that's what I do. Now, yeah. most times when you do it and you leave it, after doing it, if you make a mistake and you shift something, you might as well touch it. So what I do most times is I always use that thing continuously. Once I just see that it's not properly aligned, I just go, with it. I just click on those, on the three icons and I go there and I align the thing over again. Oh, okay. You get you yes. always, always make use. You cannot use your grid to get um, what's it called? Um, your logos or your yeah. your icons to be aligned equally. You almost always use that two. By that oh. place you have designed, you will just see the two there. One is to align equally. One is to align to center, align to top, align to bottom, distribute horizontally, distribute vertically. So you just play along with it until you get what you want. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Okay, yeah, You're thank welcome. you very much. Ma. Okay, so uh Timilehi, go ahead. Good afternoon. 
Hello. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, I wanted to um, talk about um, um, the work I did on Figma. Like when I checked back on my Figma board, like I was expecting like to see because I wasn't really sure of my work. I wasn't sure of the colors that I picked. I wasn't even sure of the whole design. But when I was to see the comments on Figma, I only saw uh, where's your style guide. Like, I was like expecting like, um, maybe a comment or something I did bad on the design, but I didn't see anything like that. Hmm. Does that make the design a pass or I still have to do something? At what stage are you in? Are you on rather? I've been promoted, I'm in stage five. Uh -uh. It's a pass now, young woman. Hmm? <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, so I think you, you still fall in the same category with uh, I think the first person who talked about feedback. Okay, so when I asked for a style guide, it means there's something I'm actually looking out for that you were taught. So um, you've already been promoted, so but we still need an extra feedback of what you did wrong. Um, I think I'll just reach out to the mentor who graded your work and then, or maybe I might just do that myself. So just maybe okay. just, yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, yep, Ruth, Ruth, rather, go ahead. Hello, Ruth. Okay, so if she's not there, um, Andra, go ahead. Um, 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 yes, it seems my network is having issues. No, it's fine. Okay, so Andra, go ahead. Okay, yeah, I'm here. Um, I don't know if um, good evening. Sorry, good evening. Um, I don't know if I'm the person or my Figma is broken. I don't know. But then, anytime I want to put auto layout, it's like the whole design just scatters. Glory. I don't know, like. It will be in vertical um, position and then out of the blue, it becomes straight. I'm not like, what's happening here right now? Am I doing, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Please help out. <laughs> I don't even know if I haven't asked this question very well. Safe, but... Okay, uh, Boma or Dara, I think you know you should actually, Ma, can you help her out with that? Please, there I should answer it. I I really don't work with Figma most times, like so. I don't I don't have I don't experience that, so I don't have an answer for it. You're an XD person. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, um, Adizi, I think what what I'll actually advise is this. Um, you know, you you actually learn better by practicing. So, um, one of the tutorials where you actually had to create an auto layout. So I'd advise you actually go through that process. There's a certain process she used to create it, you know, to make use of the auto layout. So I'll suggest you go back and then repeat it exactly, um, you know, how she did it, okay? And then you might, in fact, when you're actually repeating that, you might actually see that maybe there's something you're doing wrong or there's something you're doing, um, yeah, basically there's something you're, not really doing the way you should. So that's what um, I would answer. I said the design has moved out. Uh, okay, well, uh, maybe we might just even have a session to work that out so I can understand you better. Okay, so just uh, send me a message on Slack, then just work that out. So uh, Samuel, let's just move on. So we can. Thank you. <clears throat> Samuel. Uh, good evening. Yes, wonderful evening. All right. Um, my uh, feedback in respect to um, the last um, activity we just concluded. All right, it's about the feedback on our on my feedback, basically. Okay, I don't know if it's possible for um, feedback on Figma to be like you saw. Okay, you've gone through my design. You saw the errors. You saw everything you you actually know to be wrong, or and to, how to improve on. Why can't it be um, 
the comment been done once so i can actually look at this um at once and correct everything and give the okay this has been done but i noticed that okay if it a feedback was done for my figma okay i checked it okay i worked on it and if i know it okay i i, I messaged and i sent a message to the mentor that actually dropped the comment oh this has been right i can be check okay okay I, i'm going to do this then from from the link another comment check this so it looks so because Okay, for instance, okay, like me now, I, I do work and okay, I just have limited time to actually work through this and give and work on the correction and the likes. Okay. But now another comment was, another feedback was dropped again. Another comment was done on my Figma again after I've corrected that. So I think um, dropping or giving feedback one after one correction is being done. It's not to some, to some of us. Don't look too too nice on us, kind of. So I think if this can actually be done, the feedback can be done once. So we can say, okay, um, you don't have um blue style, your alignment is bad, your this is, and we can just work on it at once and get and and probably promotion can be done. Or if what we have been corrected on is not is not done well again, then we can know that okay, this feedback is actually still on what and be corrected for initially. So that's what I just want to say. Thank you. Okay, so apologies for whatever inconvenience you've had. Uh, but one thing I want to say is this. Um, we're humans. Okay, so um, it's, I, I wouldn't, well, it's not really impossible per se, but having to give you feedback once and for all, um, it's, it's going to be, uh, for me, I would say it's a 50-50 thing because it's possible that I go through your work and I miss out on something. And then maybe when I have to go through it again and then I notice something. So we, we are humans, of course, it happened. And it's also possible that the mentor who graded your work actually you know, based on oversight or something, misses out on something and someone else, some, uh, some other mentor comes, you know, goes through your work and then points out uh, something else. So we are human, okay? I know it's, uh, it's inconveniencing, uh, but I'm not sure that affected your promotion. That I'm very sure of. I'm not sure it affected your promotion. And the two comments I can see here is talking about your style guide and uh, I think your art board. You didn't really name them correctly. Yeah, so I think those are the basic comments I'm actually seeing there. So I understand and um, we'll try. That's all I can say, we'll try to give um, as much feedback as we can concerning a particular task, but but it's possible that we come back to that work and then we get to see something that we did not see. Like I said, we're humans. Of course, even you that you're designing, you, there's always that um, chance of you forgetting something or you know passing by something. So we'll, we'll try as much as possible to do um, as much as we can. Okay, uh, Martins. Oh, good evening. Everyone. Yes, good evening. Can you hear good evening? Um, I think I fall in the category of those who uh, didn't use a um, style guide. Um, and I think, um, although I've not been promoted because um, EQ said I, um, I submitted a wrong Figma link, but I've submitted the right one right now. But the thing is, um, I thought about, I mean, I had no idea about uh, any book donation uh, kind of, I had no idea. So I was just uh, freestyling on my um, Figma board and then, so I was just doing everything with, without, I mean, any uh, inspiration or, or so. So while I'm done, while, I, while, while, while I'm done, I now, I thought about the, um, the style guide and the thing, and I was like, can I do it after we design it? So I left it there that if it is a problem, anybody look, looking at my work would comment, comment on it, because I don't know if I can create a style guide after designing and not confuse whoever is looking at my work. Okay, you know, um, I, when people say you don't understand the 
I book stuff. Um, I, I, I'm, I get confused. So I begin to wonder, how did you get here? Like, you, you, you guys make it sound like it's strange. No, I didn't say I didn't understand it. I said, okay. I haven't experienced anything like a group donation or a platform before. So I didn't know what to do. Okay, so okay. that's why, sorry, let me cut you short, okay? That's yeah. why, um, that's why you, uh, we taught you guys how to do the research. Okay, because if, if someone walk up, walks up to you, look, I have this solution and I need you to uh, work out the, you know, the design and everything. You may not have any knowledge about it because it's a solution to a problem that you may not even know. So that is where the whole research thing comes in. That's why you guys were taught how to, you know, the basics of, you know, doing a research and that. Okay, so, but that's by the way. Um, so I'm actually checking your submission now. Yeah, you said you submitted again. So the same link you submitted. Uh, I don't know, how are you, where are you getting the link from? Did you click on share to get the link? Because this second link you submitted is not accessible. It's still the same thing as the first link, file not found. So um, I don't know how you're getting the link. I don't know how you, yeah, something is going on. So maybe you should click on share and then, you know. Okay, okay. Work well that. Okay, yes, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Um, any other question? Rhoda, go ahead. Hey, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So I got a comment on my Figma board and the mentor, okay, the comment was that my lo-fi design could be better, but then from the class, I think it was Boma, yeah, the one that she took us on, she said it's a lo-fi design, so you could just use, um, yeah, shapes and all of that, so long as it's something that you understand and you know what you are doing, and then your hi-fi design, like, it really shows what you want. So I don't understand. Like, I was confused. Am I supposed to add images to the lo-fi or text or what? Um, sorry, guys. I had a technical issue. Hi, Ruda, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Um, can you drop the link to your Figma um, file? Okay, Okay. so sorry, uh, I've been actually speaking since I didn't know I was not coming. So um, instead of dropping the link, maybe I should just share it so that at least maybe we'll just use this to learn, okay? Ruda, okay. do you mind? That's right. No, it's fine. Okay, good. Okay, so here we go. Mm, right. So this, I feel, that's why I said I told you this could be better. Okay, because I look at this and this doesn't really give me much of a, like, I don't really know what, I'm just in a bunch of shapes and I don't even know what's going on right here. Okay, I don't really know what's going on right here. So that's why I said it could be better. So your, for me personally, okay, your, your lo-fi, your low fidelity designs, it's, it's kind of actually just, it's to me, I just, let me just put it like, it's the foundation of your house, but at least you know that this place is the master's bedroom. So in the foundation, you know, okay, fine, this place is master, this place is toilet. This place is this, this place is that, this place is this, this place is that. But when I look at this, I, okay, I really don't know what's going on here. So, and if someone sees this for the very first time, he's just gonna see a bunch of shapes. Okay, for example, this, I have no idea what this particular screen is going to even display or what is this screen all about? Doesn't even have a label actually. So I don't know if you get my point. That's why I said it could be better. I didn't, I didn't condemn it, but I said it could be better. Uh, so maybe I'll actually just show, uh, maybe there are, you can actually just wait in there. Maybe I'll just get a sample lo-fi for 
and then get to this page for you guys to see. So, uh, there over to you actually. Now, I would like for you to show them something you prefer. Um, but like I said before, I don't think anything is wrong with, you know, that's why I feel. Except that it doesn't provide enough context. Okay, so the thing is, if you're going to show your work to someone else, if you're not, okay, they, they usually say that design um, is bad if you have to explain it. Okay, so you know you're submitting something and the person was not in your room or, you know, the person was not there with you discussing your design with you. So we probably need to understand your concept a little bit more. Okay, so for this assignment, maybe, just maybe, because I'm not going to condemn it either, just maybe shapes and lines um, were not enough. Okay, because um, look, um, you know, IK, for example, now, that second screen, he did not even understand what was going on there. Okay, so if you're going to show maybe a non-designer or, or even other members of your team a design and they did not do like the brainstorming session with you, it's likely advisable that you know you give it more context. By more context, you could have added um, some words, okay? Because someone was asking earlier about name, um, password, email. So you could have done that. So we know, okay, this is a form or okay, this is a page or this is a model. Okay, I can, can go on now to share the other design. Okay, so let me just share this uh, sample. Um... Yes, let me pick this person, Wakumolola here, yeah, I think. So this is Omar. So um, I'm not going to say this is the best. No, I'm not, but uh, based on uh, what I could actually lay my hands on as quickly as possible. So at least this kind of gives me uh, much, a, a bit understanding of what's going on here. Okay, so I, I'm not actually seeing an actual image here, but with this, I get to understand, okay, fine. I think I have an idea of what's going on here. So that is basically that you can see this. So. This is a, this this is a pretty much this is pretty much a lo-fi for me, okay. So you we, we, you don't really get to display everything. So your hi-fi, like I said, well this is me speaking. Um, to me, I, I it's more like uh, it, it's a resemblance of the finished product. So that means your lo-fi, it doesn't really carry the resemblance, but it's kind of like the foundation of it. Now look, you, this is now her high fidelity, okay. Uh, so let me pick this up. So. Sorry about that. Where is this young girl's work? Okay, so good. So now you can actually now see the colors. You can see everything coming to life. But so all these things, you can see them coming to life right here. So that's basically, so that's why I told you, yeah, you have your shapes, you have that, it's fine. But it can be better. Like Dara said, uh, let, let's not have to think too much, you know, about what you're actually working on. Okay, that actually talks much about uh, your design. So uh, I think I think that's that's fine for me. Yeah, so there over to you. Yeah, okay. Um, do you guys want us to do, to go over like the task from scratch, like personal then, you know, we just pick our user stories. Because um, me too, I think one of the things I noticed is that a lot of people struggle with their lo-fi, a lot of people. So I think uh, that's kind of like how I want to go about this, the, the remainder of this session. Maybe we should just quickly do something, right? You know, user stories and then we'll do a little bit of user flow. But some of your flows too were very confusing. But you know, at least you did something, so you have marks for that. But with your user flow and your lo-fi, all of you are really good with hi-fi and some of you with colors and all that. But it's it's very surprising that you don't, that you can't get your lo-fi right because it's supposed to be a step-by-step -step process, right? So if you have your lo-fi, it's easy to do hi-fi. So I'm very surprised <clears throat> that most of you are getting your hi-fi and you're not doing, some of you did not even do lo-fi. So how did you um, come up with the hi-fi design? Because your lo-fi is supposed, like I can say, it's supposed to be your foundation. If you have that, you can then build on it. You can even still move things around before you come up with your final designs. Okay, and, and I think that's part, kind of like why some of you spend so much time to on your task. Because <clears throat> some of you have submitted um, your 
you know, the Myro one, and then the one on Figma is still pending. And you're not supposed to spend that much time on it. If you have your lo-fi, it's very, it's not that difficult, really. It's really not that difficult. So um, I'm throwing it out there. Do you guys want us to quickly, you know, do something on lo-fi user story? And let's just do an example of, of the task that we gave you guys. And then we'll move on from there. I'm still seeing hands. Yes, please. Okay, um, okay. I think we'll just save your questions, okay? Maybe we'll attend to it after now. We've spent um, quite some time trying to tackle questions. All right, so let's let's just quickly do that. Um, all right, let me just share my screen now. <clears throat> uh, screen. Okay. All right, um, this is someone's work. So we asked for persona, um, your user story, your wireframe, your user flow, wireframe, and then the high five. I doubt time will permit us to go through you know, everything, but let's, let's just see something. First of all, um, okay, I'm going to move this back to the other All right. So um, this is not the best, honestly, this is not the best of um, personas, first of all, but we'll just work with it, okay? We'll just work with it. So we have two persons here, Elsa, Daniel, um, okay, about you, your goals, your frustrations. Okay, this is as scanty as it gets. That's fine. So yeah, this person already has a comment. This is just user stories. Your user flow is actually like a sketch of boxes and lines. See? So first of all, and I, I think there are other examples of this too. This is someone else's work. Your user story is, is not exactly supposed to look like this. Remember when I said that a user story is um, supposed to give you features or it's supposed to show you the value your app or whatever your product is providing to the user. Okay, so it's supposed to be a persona, the action, and the benefits. Do you remember that um, stuff that we talked about? Then from there, you're supposed to now pick out features from those user stories. That's why it's a step-by-step -step process. Um, and I even did not want to, you know, reduce just marked for this particular part, but some of you are designing for something different from the user story and the user flow that you created. And I don't even know how that's coming. Like, it's as if you just went online and you went to pick out, you know, a donation design or something and you put it there. And it's different from the flow that you have. It's different from the user story that you have. Okay, but for moving on sake, I'm not going to point that out, but let's, let's do something. So we'll just, for this one, I will pick out two or three user stories. And we'll move on from there. So um, this is just a lot. And oh yeah, I saw a lot of you doing as a logged in user, as a logged in user. Where are you getting that from? For real, because I know that you're supposed to look at your persona, right? Look at their goals, their motivations, their pain points. And then you that is where you bring out your user stories from. Not a lot of people got this um, part, right? Okay, this is one of the perfect examples I was going to show. So this is someone's user story and see what they did from their persona. Okay, they bought out these user stories and then they have the features. So as a user, I should be able to react to donations, write articles about donations. So basically, if, I, if I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, okay, this person needs a way to share their thoughts, thoughts around their donations. So that's what a user story is supposed to look like. A, a persona with their action and the benefit, and then the feature you want to create out of that persona. As a user, I should be able to report inappropriate content, blah, 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 and the person makes the feature report content. So you know that in this thing I'm building, there needs to be a way for this person to report content. You know, so like that, as a user, I should be able to rate donations. So you know that in your app or on your website, whatever product you're building, you need to add a rating function. That is what user story is supposed to do for you. So 
I don't know why, um, you know, we're not writing essays and stuff. Um, so yeah, back to the one I was going to use as an example. So me, I'm just going to look at the persona. Okay, I'm going to ignore all of this and just pick out two user stories at least. So um, Elsa, I'm saying that um, she's an American who recently moved. She loves reading fiction, blah, blah, blah. Um, she loves giving back to the society, but she's too busy, right? With her everyday duty to visit a non-governmental organization, right? And she feels frustrated, frustrated that she cannot be able to help as much as she would love to. Under her goal, she said she wants to be able to donate books online. There should be an option for paid pickup, right, of books. There should be a tracker showing number of books donated. If I want to frame a user's story out of this, from here, I already know that she loves giving back to the society. So she's a philanthropist, right? So I can start by saying, as a, oh yeah, and we know that she's busy, right? So I can start by saying, um, you know, as a busy philanthropist, um, okay, we need to make this thing a little bit bigger. We'll just reduce our text. Um, let's just go ahead with this. As a busy philanthropist, um, say, I want to be able to donate. I don't know if I should even go through the stress of writing this now, but let's, let's see. I want to be able to donate books online, right? Because she doesn't want to be going to the non-governmental place again, right? So I can have time. So I can have time to focus on other things, for example. Okay, so from this, um, I know that whatever product I am building, this is the persona, a busy philanthropist. This is the action they want to take. They want to be able to donate books. What is the benefit? What are, what are they going to get um, from donating books online? That's the keyword, right? So that they can do other things. They are busy. They cannot come and be carrying books and be going to, you know, wherever non-governmental places they used to go to. So they want to do it online. So the feature I'm drawing out from here is to be able to donate online. That's my first user story, just like that. Um, let me pick out another one. So, okay, we already know this person likes um, donations, right? And she says she wants to be able to track, a tracker showing number of books. I mean, this person was not even done very well, but that's fine, let's move on. So, you forget to donate um, in a year, that's one of your frustrations. You want to donate books, but you have to visit a non-governmental organization. Under your goals, you have a tracker. I'm interested in this one, a tracker showing number of books donated. So I can say, um, as an avid book donor, uh, an avid book donor. Um, I want to be able to see I want to be able to see all my donations, right? So so I can track progress or you know whatever we're just doing this offhand. So um, looking at this, we already know, as in this one is even obvious, that you need a way to track donations. This is kind of what I was like, like very simple. Some of you were even doing a whole lot, like extra, extra stuff. Just very simple. Look at your goals, frustration, and just pick out you know, features that you think might help this person. Daniel, um, let me see, he wants to read over five books per month. He wants to have access to an online platform where you can read for free. Cool. 
an option which recommends similar books to the one selected. What are his frustrations? He's not financially buoyant. So Daniel does not want to pay for books online. He just wants an app where he can open and he can read books for free. He does not also want to go and buy books, which is fine. Right? So let's pick that one and make a user story um, out of it. So I can just say, this one is not supposed to be very difficult. So I can just say, as a book lover, I'm assuming Daniel is a book lover. Right. So as a book lover, I want to be able to read books online without having to spend money. Yeah. I want to be able to read books online without spending money. From this, I know that my app has to, even if, even if I want to make money out of this product, if I'm the one building iBooks, for example, right? I know that some books have to be free or basically they should be able to just download, download books for free. Okay, so just like that, we keep going. It's, it's not very difficult really. So I don't know why for you were doing essay and theory on top of user stories. It's just very straightforward. Just pick out stuff from your persona and move on. Okay, so we have this. That's fine. Now for your user flow, this person did not even do a user flow. That's that's very shocking because I wonder how you are now able to structure your app. I know, I know it's very, very tempting when you hear, okay, build a build an app design an app for donating books, you go straight to Figma and you start designing. The problem with that is that in real life, problems don't, um, you know, solutions don't come up like that. Like your superpower as a designer is your design thinking. It's this method, it's this approach that you put into your design. You know, fire design is just one part of it. It's just like, um, like what we see after all the hard work that you put. So please, Please, all these things are important. I don't know why you have your persona, you have your user story, you don't have a user flow, but you have your final design. Or you don't have low five, but you have your final design. It just tells me that what you did is you just went to, you didn't think about it. You just went to Figma and you just started designing something immediately. On that same one page, instead of putting color, instead of putting everything immediately. And trust me, it will take you more time. I know it doesn't look like it, but it's, it's wood. If I have to bring, um, create a board, right? And start putting things, I will think about it more. But if I have all these things already, I already have my little, little, little component. All I now need to do in Figma is put them together. Okay, so let's quickly do um, a user flow. I, need, I think I first need to show you guys some examples. Okay, this is someone's user flow. Is this confusing or not? I mean, it's, so you register, you sign up, you set your profile, you select your book category, what happens next? Like you need to, in, we do, you need to present things better than, you know, than we, are, we all are doing now, really. Because like I said, if you have to explain some of these things, then your design is bad. Someone needs to look at this and see and understand that, Okay, when I register, the next thing I'm going to do immediately is to set my profile. The next thing I'll do is to view, do you understand? So we just need more clarity with our designs and with our processes, okay? It's just for the sake of, okay, stage four and stage five. If not, a lot of you will really, really go back and you know, do one or two changes in your design. But um, that's fine, let's just move on. So for this person, I kind of know some of the features that I already want to add. So the person should be able to donate, should be able to track, should be able to download books for free. Okay, let's let's just try and do. Okay. So we're starting with the user flow, right? Um, 
splash screen. And this is the thing with my like is it's not too much work really. It's really not too much work. Move on like that from your splash screen to onboarding. See, I'm just this dot. I'm just going to click on it and drag it, just like that. Quickly before you knew it, we're done. From onboarding, this is where some people made um, some mistakes. There are two ways to go about your user flow. You can make it as detailed as possible, or you can just do like you know, just an overview of what it, it should be. We know that when you open an app, right, you see the splash screen and you now tell you all the things you can do with the app. When you click on continue, right, remember that we said user, I think you guys just need to go back and read up on some of these things or even watch the videos again before you do your task. Your user flow is supposed to have um, circles, boxes, um, or you know, some other shapes to determine different things. This one's not a screen. So a rectangles are screen. At this point, if you want to be detailed, I think I'll do the two. So we'll just you know, decide from here. After onboarding, for example, we now go um, to, I'm going to add a different shape because this one, I want it to be for decision making. Okay, so does this person have an account or not? Right? From here, I can then say, okay, yes, you have an account. So you log in. Or I can say, no, you don't have an account. So you sign up. I mean, this is just, it's not going to look very pretty because we're just running through stuff, right? But this is kind of, if you want to break it down, this is how you break it down. But what I saw everybody do is splash onboarding, sign up stroke login. So at what point did they make the decision that, okay, I have an account, I want to log in, or I don't have an account, I want to sign up. Okay, so you need, you, if you go back and you read on um, user flow, you will see that this is um, likely the best way to go about it. So you break things down. Not that from splash and onboarding, you go straight. In fact, Since, since we're being detailed, okay, um, I already made the mistake next to but we can just continue. The circles are supposed to be entry points, okay? So this is when you open the app. So if somebody is looking at this thing, they know where you're coming from and where you're going. There's, there's always a beginning and an ending like to every user flow. So this is where you open the app. Then you, these ones will now be screens. Anything in a rectangle is a screen. So splash screen or body screen. Decision making, sign up or login. Okay, then we can then move on from here. If you've signed up, right, or you've logged in, both ways should send you to your homepage, right? But in this particular design, because I know we are building for iBooks, when it comes to books, when it comes to music, people have preferences, okay? So this is just me um, throwing out my own idea if I was going to design something like this. People have preferences. So from the onset, I'm going to have to ask you, what types of books do you like? I saw some people do it and that was very, very beautiful. What types of books do you like? Okay, so you then select the types of, if you go to Spotify, YouTube, they do the same thing. If you're opening for the first time, you, they will ask you to um, choose some artists that you like, okay? So they can then um, recommend songs for you. So it's kind of the same thing. This is how you think about products. Okay, so me, I'm going to ask you what type of books do you like? What genre of books do you like? So from here, I'm going to just say, um, add another line. By the way, to make your line straight, just hold shift, okay, well, so I'm going to add another line to these two places. Now just add a rectangle, right? Categories. Or I can say 
preferences. So it is at this point that you now choose, you know, if you like horror, if you like romance novels, any type of, you know, novel that you like, you choose here. And then from here, we get to your home page. It's, it's very, um, I mean, it takes time, but if you can do this, when you go to feedback, you're, you're, you're not going to spend time at all because you already know what you're doing. Do you get? So I know that if I open Figment, the first time I want to design a splash screen, I'll design an onboarding screen, a sign up and login screen, um, a screen for preferences, and a screen for home page. Do you see? So if you lay it out from the beginning, just smooth sailing at the end of the day. So for my home page now, I can then decide that, okay, this is where we now break it down. What do we want them to see on the home page? Um, so yeah, more lines, more lines. I'm just going to duplicate um, this. See, yeah, Miwa is very um, intuitive. So more lines. This is fine. Um, why do I keep doing this? I mean, we all use apps, so we know that on the home page, we're going to have options to do different things. So I'm just going to keep this to four, but you know that if you're working on a real product, it's going to get more complex than this, right? So um, let's just continue. So we want four options for our nav bar. Um, of course, on your home page, that's where you get to explore, you see different kinds of books, right? Uh, Yeah, so you see different kinds of books. No, I don't want it. Um, so the main thing that we even want them to do here, right? And then remember our free um, user person, he wants to just read books for free. So I know that I need to create like a library for him. Right, you just need a place where you can access. Um, I'm not sure what's happening. Okay, so you need a place where you can access all his books, right? All his free books. So I'm just going to create a library, right, for him. Um, and then, okay, maybe your profile or an, or an account setting. Any of those things, so far, it's fine. Library. Okay, so from here now, I already know that, you know those four buttons are usually on the, your nav bar or your tab bar. These are the four icons that we're going to have. Explore, donate, library, and profile. And then if you want to go for that, if time permits you, you know, you can then break it down. Under the explore, like when we open our home page, this is the first thing we see. So under the explore, what do we want to see? Um, can make this prettier than this. I'm just going to add, um, you know, a bunch of text. I'm going to say, the person should be able to see some categories of books, right? Um, the person should be able to see popular books. And then because we asked for their preference, right, we should be able to now see some recommendations. Right, recommendations. So, um, um, I think I'll stop here for the user flow, but I'm sure um, we get the, you know, the trick. So yeah, um, this is this is not pretty at all. But you just you know connect lines to it. So even if you're not there and someone looks at this, so I know that you start from here and you go all the way here and you keep going like that. 
Okay, so we have this, we have a little bit of something we can use. The next thing is to go to Figma and start designing. <clears throat> if anybody has any question at this point, you can let me know. Like, is there anything I did here now that is not clear? Obviously, these features that I brought out here, they are going to be based off of my user story. Donate online, track donations. Okay, for example, that track donation is a feature, right? And I have this part here. What I can do is, why does this happen? So what I can do is, on that donate, right? There should be a way for the person to track donations. Okay, so that's how you keep putting it together, you keep arranging it. And that's why you're using Miro. Okay, so you can quickly move things around, arrange everything you want to arrange, refer back to all these places. Okay, just like that. Um, okay, so I'll be referring back to this when I, okay, um, EHC. Okay, so you said um, on the user story, we shouldn't use as a user. No, so, you should. That's what you should use. Oh, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Instead of like as a user, or I think it just gives you, you can use as a user, right? But it gives you more context. If I tell you as a user, I want to be able to donate books online so I can have time to focus on other things. It could be anybody. And I'm wondering, what is this person's problem? Like, why can you not go and donate books physically? But if I say as a busy philanthropist, so I know that this person is busy and this person likes okay. you get. So that's why as a user is very big. It doesn't tell me anything about the person. This is um, on that tracking donation, this person is an avid book donor, which means they like to donate. Like every time they read a book, the next thing they want to do is donate. Okay, because I'll be wondering if you say as a user and you now say, I want to see all my donations, I'll be like, what is this person's problem? Like, are you the one that donate fast? Right? But if I know that this is what you love doing, I understand why you want to track your progress. Okay, just something like that. This person loves reading books. What cannot pay for it, which is fine. And that's what we're designing for. But if you just say as a user, I'll be like, okay, what's this person's problem? Why can you not go and buy, you know, books that you want to read? Something like that. So using as a user is very, very, very big. Just add more context to your user experience. All, All right. right. Thank yeah, thank you. Um, okay, I'm just going to dive right into Figma. Um, so definitely this is some assignments. So yeah, first of all, I'm not even sure if this is the low file or this is the high file. This person had only one page. I had to create these other pages. Okay, so did this person do low file and forget to do high file? or you know, it was intentional or whatever. And how come there are no, um, will I say frame? Because for me to even see the full context of this design, I have to change my background to white. So we need to be very, 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 you know, will I say tenacious when we're doing our designs? Just try and read your work or you try and go through your work twice or three times before you submit it because this doesn't even give me anything. I only know, okay, I book, right? You sign in and order. What, what is this the high five? Is this the high five? It's not very clear to me. You know why it's not clear? I'm seeing the circles and boxes, right? I'm seeing kind of some colors. There's color here. This is definitely black. But then there's nothing here. So this just looks like a mix of both high five and low five. I'm not even sure how to how to start treating this, for example. Okay, so but I'm just showing you. So, and I think you still have some time. You can go back, if it's not been promoted, you can really go back and still you know, put some finishing touches because this doesn't show me anything. All right, so moving on. Um, 
let's try and do some lo-fi, right? If I was going to do a lo-fi of this particular, I'm just going to copy all these things because we don't have time, right? Um, I don't even know if I should do it down. Okay, let me just do it down here. Um, so create a frame, because I'm not sure how you came up with this, but you create a frame here, right? Just going to put it on so I can copy stuff. This is usually how your frame looks. I really have no idea how this came about. Okay, but moving on. So you create a frame. I'm creating the low file now, right, for this design. Um, usually, like I said, I, re I really prepare my circles and boxes, but I'm just going to do a little more content so you see. Um, so I'm just going to select these and copy them. Don't even have time on here. Um, for the rectangle, rectangles, I'm just going to do something. Okay, it's a wireframe at the end of the day. I don't like this mouse, so I like to wrangle um, my stuff. So let's use 48, okay, and make it round. Hmm. It's just a wireframe. Um, just wait to reduce it a little bit. So it's just a wireframe, not so much um, you know, work to be done in it. It's very surprising that many of you had high five and we didn't have low five. Meanwhile, you're supposed to start from here. So right, we want to add the name, um, what else, email, password, and all that. But we want this to look, we want this one to look like a button. I'm just going to remove the fill, add a stroke, remove the fill, okay? Um, you know, we can still make this look like a wire frame. Name. Email. Password. Right. Um, fine. Normally, we should just want to lay you know, all the states. Uh, but we don't have the time of day. So yeah, I'm just going to make this bold so we know it's a button, right? And that's it. That's just it. Like, with this, I know it's a wireframe. But she, she used register. So all these other things, you can then add them. And you know, there is no way you look at this and you don't know what this page is. For the login, um, I think it's name and password. Same thing, just quick. Spelling. Just name, password, um, sign in instead. Okay. This one, we don't have an account or whatever. Um, I'll add forget pass, forgot password, right? Yeah. I move this here. Let's see how. See? Already have an account sign in. Yeah, we can add that.
Okay. So that's, this is kind of how your wireframe should look. And I don't know why at your wireframe stage, you're changing your background to something like this. Let me use five. Let me use uh, this. I don't know why we're always doing this. It's easier when it's white. So if someone does not even know what this is, they can almost tell. It's just that there's no color, but there's content already. Most people, their wireframes had this color, and I'm wondering where you got that from. It's just easier when it's white. If I want to do a high fi of this now, I already have all of it, really. I just need to now add a color. Mm, I can then make this like this, make this black or white. That's what I need to do. That's what I'm saying. How did you do high fi and you did not do low fi? Because for me, I'll just duplicate all these things all over again and then start adding color and whatever else. Okay, so um, so yeah, that's that. Let's try and do the whole page. Let's just quickly do the whole page. So if I wanted to do a wireframe for the whole page, I'm just going to do a new frame. Um, so let me go back to my story and see. So we said home page, explore, donate library profile, okay, categories, popular recommendation. All right, so, so I'm going to pick the ones below first. Um, so I know this is a wireframe, remember. So for these icons down here, I don't know if you can see, these icons down here, for your wireframe, just use boxes. Okay, just use boxes. I think this is fine. I think we have four, four things. So just use boxes and of course, if you're designing, you need to auto lay all your stuff. So it's easy for you. I'm just quickly doing this. So I think we said explore. I definitely need to set that this to um what's the difference? I think we said donate. Um, I think we wanted a library. Back to the day. Back to the day. And we wanted um sofa, right? So yeah, this is really, really, really just rough sketch. But if you're going to to a wireframe of your home page. It has to look something like this, okay? And it depends on how much, like I said, depends on how much detail you want to do. I can do, I mean, this is supposed to be for hi-fi even, but, you know, we can just do it and say, and give it an effect. Um, where should we have a date? Okay, this is fine. Okay. So yeah, all these things are supposed to like be here. E75, Matsu. Uh, 
that's because it's a wireframe, okay? So you can give this a very, very, very subtle stroke. Um, so someone that sees this knows that, okay, this is a, um, you know, Nava or whatever. And now we just add some text. So this is Fumi's work. I can say, hello. Right, so I can just say hello for me. And then what do we want her to be able to do? Um, to search, right? So let's just reduce this a little bit. Just wireframe, but at least you should be able to know what's going on. If I even don't want to add any icon, I would not add, you know, and it should be fine because at least the wireframe will explain everything. So I'm going to make this box a little bit um, darker. So you know it represents something, right? So this is supposed to be the search icon. Um, so I'm just going to say here, search books, blah, 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 blah. right? So that's that. And then we said we wanted to add um, categories, popular and recommendations. All right, so for categories, anyhow we want to do it. Uh, nowadays we use tags. So we're just going to do like little, little blocks like this. Just like that. And you know, you should go on and on. I think we should reduce them to 80. So we can make them count. So, um, six, seven. Okay, so just like that. Um, Align, align, align. Um, right, categories. Um, so let's do another one for popular. And we want them to see like at least the book cover, right? That looks like something I want them to see. So yeah, we can do that. Name of the book. Um, and the author, right? Using pure black in the design. And here we can say CO. Can do one more for recommended. Recommended. Um, and now we can use smaller boxes. Just just try. Anyway, this, this thing is supposed to overflow. OK. 
Okay, so when you school, you're supposed to see stuff. So I recommend that we can do something like this. And then the name of the book, auto, you know, can come something like this. And then we can add one other section, maybe the genre of book, right? It's thriller. Genre. Thriller, right? And then maybe an icon. So this is how I'm representing my icon. Maybe an icon here yeah, to maybe like the book or save it or you know, whatever. Right. Okay, so that's quickly, that's quickly that. Of course, when you scroll, you can then see this I'm recommending. Right, it's supposed to look like this. Why am I? Um, why are they moving? If I just opened your work, for example, and I see this, I already know what this looks like. Like I know, nobody is going to tell me that maybe there's an icon here, or this is just for you to search. And then you can scroll this way for your categories, and then you can see you know, popular books. And when you keep scrolling, you see recommended. I mean, this is what your wireframe is supposed to look like. If I want to build a high five for this, I can then just start adding colors. Like it's not even a big deal. Okay, you know when I said I wanted to add preferences, to this, I can just do um, okay. So I can say, let's get to know more about you, right? Um, let me zoom. I can say, let's know more about you. I can just you know, add more text if I wanted to. Um, say select, select the genres you are into. Um, all right. Okay. Um, I don't know who has this board. But instead of using black and then reducing the opacity, just use another. I can use six, 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 you know, to just reduce. Instead of using black and then reducing the opacity, it's much more better. Okay, I'm just going to reduce this. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we can see select the journeys you're into. This is still wireframe, right? And I'll just put boxes like this, for example. Um, okay, let's give ourselves more space. If I select all these things, I can quickly you know, align them properly. Let's do so. And let's do two, right? If I wanted to round this a little bit, that would be fine. And then I can just add a stroke and close the field. So yeah, yeah, I can then start typing the journey. If you want thriller, You know, if you want um, brands, so we don't have time. I'm just going to duplicate this, this. You know, so something like this, and then of course there's going to be maybe an icon. You can use an emoji, or you know, whatever. 
So the person just knows what's going on, basically. I think this screen looks familiar to you guys, right? So basically what we're saying is when you sign up or log in, this is then the first thing you see. So we can give you recommendations based off, you know, whatever you choose here. And this can be as many or as few as you want it to be. With this now, if I want to view the high five, it's very easy. I'm just going to, you know, remove all these things, replace them, and that's it. Um, let's, let's just try something. I don't even splash with work here. Um, okay, it's running. So I'm just going to search for book covers. Okay, so I can select my frame. Looking for a book cover that is already there. So we don't have to go very far. Right? Oops. Will not behave yourself now. Uh, select the frame and select the book. Please work. Okay. That's the problem we're using um, all these plugins. Sometimes they just have they just have issues. Um, same thing. So it's not selecting the frame, but basically you get the idea. Another way I can do this is just to remove these guys and duplicate it. I'm just assuming right now that we're building a list of mouse. So G to D to D. That's why I said, how did you do high five if you didn't do low five? Because if you, if you gave me like, you know, one hour to do my, High five from low five, it should be easy. I'll just come in here and then start putting things and filling it. Okay, so I think that's um, kind of like where we'll stop today. If you have any questions now, you can visit it. Time is really, really fast spent. Or, you know, I hope you, you just got the basics of high five and low five. Samuel, Samuel. Right, thank you very much. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, what I'm going to ask is this low, low fi um, design, you know, in every page, we may have some sub pages and all that mm -hmm. and all that. Are, mm -hmm. we, are we supposed to design all those other pages in low fig? Like for example, let me explain to you, for example, if we are going to design, maybe to download the aim of designing this uh, app is for this guy to download this book mm -hmm. on that social category and all that. Then, mm -hmm. but then in this screen, there are other subsections, all right? So are we supposed to design all those subsections or just directly to this guy logs in, goes to home page, he clicks mm -hmm. on the book, um, search on the book, then download, aim complete, you know, stuff yeah. like that. So those things are called, okay, sorry, go on. Okay. Done? Yeah, that's my question. Are we supposed to design other screens or just that thing? So um, those things are called micro interactions where when you click on this one, what happens? When you click on this one, what happens? And some of them are really just um, models, right? Or pop-ups, right? And you know, yeah. they can just ask you, um, do you want to proceed or do you want to download? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know what you mean. So let me make that here, right? And you can just ask here, do you want to proceed or download? Exactly. You know, stuff like that. Yeah, I mm -hmm. know. So the thing is, I'm sorry, but I'm still going to say it depends. If you want to show a client 
because clients are not they don't even know Figma. Some of them don't know Figma. They'll just tell you, okay, I want an app, I want to build an app, I want to design an app um, for people to order food online. Okay, let's just use delivery, right? We want people to be able to um, you know, book deliveries online or whatever. There are many, many screens. Well, how do you um, give your ideas? How do you show or present your idea to your clients? That is why we need, because I know some of you are now thinking, do we really even need all these things? We're going to go all the way to you know, high fi later on. Um, you know, do we need it? We do. If I wanted to show a client an idea that I have for his app, I'm not going to do high, um, I'm not going to do high fidelity. This is what I'll show him. I'll tell him, okay, so for the um for the category, this is how I'm thinking about it. When the user clicks um sign in, because usually you can even prototype your wireframe, you know that, right? So when you click sign in, I'm thinking, you know, the person should see a bunch of information like this. So it requires now say, okay, that's fine. Let's go ahead with this. We then know that you've done this one, right? And then you can now make it a high five. So some other clients might, might say, okay, this bot is Let's make them smooth. Imagine that you've gone to design the team completely. You will now start to start changing stuff here and there. But if you have the whole file, right, you can then just reduce it. Okay, you know, they want something less, they want something smooth. You can then quickly do that. And show them again. Because design is an iterative process. You don't just do one and it's finished. Someone will say design is never finished. You know, so you need to do the wireframe so you can keep going back to them. For those interactions, you are a designer. At the end of the day, it's just you and your board. You can just maybe write it down or, you know, since they are micro interactions, you don't really need to show everything. You need to just show the basic concept. Which is why when I was talking about you know, user flow, if it's in your capacity to do user flow, does the client just give you a brief, I want to do this, and not told you the deliverables, uh, user stories, user flows, all those things. It is up to you. Some clients will now ask you, okay, so if they click on onboarding, what should happen next? It is left to you. If you design a very broad um, user flow, you'll be explaining a lot. But if you've already detailed it, the client can just see it without you having to explain yourself too much. Okay, so with the micro interactions, it is the same thing. For me, I won't go to that stress. It is in If I'm designing 50 screens, I cannot do wireframe for the 50 screens. Okay, and this is why some companies have a product team or a design team so you can share the work. But if it's only you doing a full client's project, just do the broad, the broad screens. We already know. Me, I know now. That if I click on explore, it should take me somewhere, right? If I click on donate, it should take me somewhere. If I click on profile, it should take me somewhere. But if the client, if I just want to show the client at least the starting point, I'll just show you this. We both know that there are many screens inside these places. If you click on see all, it should take you to another screen, but you don't need to design everything. I don't think so personally. Um, any other mentor can weigh in on this. But for me, I think, yeah, just do the broad screen, the main screen. Micro interactions can come when you have the high five ready. If any mentor wants to say anything. Um, we still have some hands. I hear Chi, I think. Okay, um, please, on the user flow, please, can you go to the user flow? The um, preferences page. I think if you are log, if you if the user is about is logging in, the preferences is not supposed to pop up because when he signed up, he has already chosen what he wants. So the preferences is supposed to be for just sign up after sign up. Oh, the login is not supposed to be connected. Yes. Sure. Let's let's try. Let's try that. Mm. Okay, so we can just add like another step, right? For preferences. 
So you sign up, select your preference, right? And then you go to yes. home page. And then we can then connect the login. Um, I can just connect it this way. Yeah. Or um, I think I can just do this. Oops. Okay. Right, so we can do this. So here we can say yes. Um, on this line, we can say no. Um, so yeah, it depends. If you have an account, yes, you log in. Here you can say no. On this line, you can just say no. So from login, um, you know. Right? Okay. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Okay. So yes, something that would, like that. Then Definitely. I... Okay, sure, go on. Okay, about the people that have problems with the wireframing, I think if you watch videos of wireframing on YouTube, there are like four main components on the wireframe, shapes, text, I think just three, shapes, text, and images. And they're like very basic ways to represent these three things. So if you can just get the very basic one that every designer can understand, because I think if, you draw a rectangle and put a cross on it, like cross the four ends. All, mm -hmm. Everybody then you are your nose is an image. Mm -hmm. So like, if you put, if you draw a rectangle yeah. and do it, yeah, cross it that way, yes. I think everybody knows it's an image mm -hmm. that yeah, you want to put them. So if you can just know like the, basic ways to represent these three things and repeat them on your designs. I think everybody, nobody will have a problem understanding the design. Yeah, that's very correct. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you. Yeah, does anybody have you know, anything else? If you have no other questions, I'm going to Hand over to IK now. Okay, so um, there are. Yeah, hello. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. Okay, so uh, yeah, thank you for the class. Thank you for really opening up stuff. So yeah, thank you guys. So let me actually say what I wanted to say um, since, okay, so. For those of you that are in stage five, okay, welcome. Um, this is the week of stage five. Next week is actually stage six. So uh, if you're in stage four, you're on this course, so it means you need to do the needful, okay? And then try as much as possible to submit and make corrections. Now, it's a beautiful thing that she has actually, that Dara has actually done justice to a lot of things and um, showed us a lot of corrections that needs to be made. Um, there's a reason I actually dragged, uh, we had to drag out this session to actually happen at this time. So um, this is it. So for your task, of course, we'll still put it up out there for you guys. For this week's task, which is for the people in stage five, this is for the people in stage five. If you're in stage four and you do what I'm about to say, uh, okay, well, and I, I actually love detention and deactivating people, so. You might just fall into that category. Okay, so for those in stage five, I'm going to give you the, uh, you, you are, you're free to actually make certain corrections on your work, especially the point of the, the user flow and everything. So go back and work on it. Work on your user stories, work on your user flow. She has actually done justice to it. So go back, review what you did and make necessary corrections. Same thing with your star guide, same thing with your um, wireframe, that your lo-fi, that's your lo-fi, and then your hi-fi. Then the extra thing that you're going to add for those in stage five, which you're going to submit, I'll drop a link for that, is to prototype your work. Yeah, so that's just the extra. So for, for those in stage five, what you have done and what you're going to just make a little bit of changes to, we need to see a prototype. So you're going to submit the prototype link. That's what you're going to be submitting for us, the prototype link. 
for us to see what you have done. So of course, I'll still drop this. So we'll still drop this on the channel. But this is just to inform those on the call. I think that gives you an ample amount of head start. Okay. So um, so that's that. Somebody has a question. Samuel, go ahead. Right. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, like, what about for us that already prototype already? We did the prototype of that hi-fi, hi-fi. You did what prototype, sorry. What? You prototyped your work. Yes, exactly, yes. Who asked you to? No, because that. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you, have, if you have done that already, then that's fine. But I, with what she has taught today, I actually, I, I am very confident that, that there are some things you need to adjust in your work. I am very confident. Yes, yes sure, sure. Good. So make those arrange, make those uh, changes, and then submit the prototype link. Prototype link. Prototype. Okay, link. You, okay, there. I go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to say, or else you're in stage five. Please just go back because we really want to see like the improvement. This is not about you being promoted, you know, and just keep going. Please go back. That's why we're doing this session, right? Please go back and you know if you have comments already, work on your comments. If you um if you are in this class and you feel like there are things you need to change, please go back and change them and we'll grade you uh, accordingly. I think okay, um maybe we should create a thread, maybe in stage four for, for stage four guys, right? So if they have any um issues, maybe they've shared their screen. Or missing words, you know, those issues we have with submissions. I think at this point they should signify. So I'll just take it up from there. Okay, but basically what okay. me I'm saying That's is fine. you guys should go back and make changes to your work. There's still room for you to be in stage five. Okay, yeah. So thank you very much. That's very important. And that's why I said even if you're in stage five, you still need to go back and make necessary corrections. Now, let me let me say this. Um, of course, the, the, um, the I think, cut off mark here is 75. So if you got a 75, it means you're promoted, but you lost 25 marks for a reason. If you got 80, you lost 10 marks for a reason. If you got 95, you lost five marks for a reason. So um, she has actually really given, and I, those people asking for feedback, this is a feedback. This class alone is a feedback. I don't need anybody coming to ask for feedback on their work. Just go through this video, go through this class once again, you get the feedback you're looking for. So let's go make the necessary changes. Um, next week, there is a, we're going to be working on something major. We're actually going to, but yeah, so uh, let's really step up because next week is going to be uh, really, really very, very engaging. Okay, very engaging. So let's, um, uh someone says something huge okay yeah something huge yeah that's fine so thank you very, thank you very much everyone uh to the mentors thank you Dara, so much for the session uh boma thank you for your presence favor and to every other mentor that is unavoidably absent okay so uh for some of you you can re actually reach out to your mentor to Lushi. She isn't feeling very well, but we we pray speedy recovery for her. Yes. So thank you very much, guys, and do have a wonderful night rest. So look out for your assignment on the stage five channel for those in stage five. Have a lovely night. Bye.